Against all odds, no one expected this, no one predicted this. How does one of the most successful teams in the Overwatch League lose to one of the league's newcomers? How did a team like the NYXL lose twice to the Atlanta Reign in Stage 2 alone? The Atlanta Reign will tell you that their advantage was NYXL refusing to prepare for what they deem lesser teams. We know how NYXL is, you know? They don't really prepare for teams that they think aren't on their level, right? But in truth, the answer comes down to strategy, to the rain finding errors and making errors. Great job. Good job, baby bang. For most of the five maps the two teams played, they both ran the popular GOATS comp. That's three tanks and three supports in case you haven't been watching. On Oasis, the first map the teams played, you can see them mirror a traditional GOATS comp. Almost immediately, you can tell that the Rain are looking for something. They're looking for the moment that the NYXL make a mistake. In GOATS, that mistake could be Azaria pushing up too close to their team and getting isolated. It could be the enemy Zenyatta exposed in the back. It could be a D.Va losing her mech and losing any ability to mitigate incoming projectiles. In this game, that mistake was mono. In an instant, the rain disintegrates the lone Reinhardt and starts to snowball the fight into their favor. Typically, Reinhardt stay near their Zarya's so that she can use her projected barriers to protect him. For whatever reason, NYXL Zarya went for a flank attack and left Mono alone and exposed. In GOATS, the six heroes interlock like a brick wall. If you kick out one brick, the whole thing crumbles down. So when the NYXL lose their Reinhardt, the fight is essentially over barring any use of ultimates. Crucially, the NYXL's Jonak pops his life-saving Transcendence ultimate, but it was too long after the rain had already started securing kills. It's mistakes like these that can change the entire outcome of a game. Even if the rain only just start to build up percentage on the point, the NYXL have to come back with a significant disadvantage. All you have to do is look up at the ultimate meters. The Rain finished the fight with 5 ultimates, including a Graviton Surge. The NYXL on the other hand have almost none. And particularly, no ultimate to save them from the massive damage of a team attacking into a Grav. This results in the Rain winning another fight while only having to use 2 ults. Unfortunately, the advantage doesn't quite last for the Rain. In the next fight, the Rain's Reinhardt, Pokpo, throws his Earth Shatter into the NYXL's shield. And since New York is a smart team, they capitalize on the mistake and win the fight. But that's the difference between these teams. Although the NYXL win a fight against the Rain, they won it in a way that doesn't bode well for the rest of the match. This same deal pops up in the next round. In the very first fight, the Rain catch Animo, the NYXL's Lucio, skating in an open position. You can see the moment the Rain recognized that they could realistically kill him. The Zarya beam swaps over to Animo, and he's instantly eliminated. But here's the key question. Was Animo out of position? Throughout the Overwatch League, you'll find Lucio's wall running around and looking for targets to shoot and gain ultimate charge. From elevated positions, they're able to get up and over barriers like Reinhardt's. Animo was doing the same thing, but the rain took that positioning and made it their goal to turn it into a mistake. It's suddenly bad positioning, and like we said before, one kill can change the entire course of a fight, and even the round. Capitalizing on mistakes or making plays into mistakes is the name of the game if you want to outplay a passive team like the NYXL. Following the fight, the NYXL come back strong. Ultimates go out and the NYXL themselves catch the Reign's Brigida out of position and take her out. And just like the Reign did a minute ago, they clean up the fight. Notably, the error of the Brigida was far more obvious than Animo's. You could argue it was no less impactful, but in a lot of ways, that kill was delivered to them. The NYXL go on to win the next fight by having ultimate advantage, but in the second attacking fight, the Rain catch Animo once again, and because GOATS is GOATS, the Rain take the pick and act on it, winning the point back. The NYXL only managed to grab the point back off a lucky pick on Dogmen, the Rain Zenyatta. Even though the NYXL win the round, the rain proved that their strategy works as long as they play proactively. 
The third round of Oasis sees the rain swap their Zenyatta for Ana. This would theoretically give them a disadvantage without the 25% extra damage from Zenyatta's Discord Orb. In reality, it let the rain better achieve their strategy than they already had. Ana's Sleep Dart punishes NYXL members that get caught with it. A sleeping target is an easy target to kill. Aside from that, the team utilized the increased damage and damage resistance from Ana's Nano Boost to drive their Winston into the team, melting NYXL and prompting Jonak to waste his transcendences. Through careful Ana play and devastating Nano Boosted Winston fights, the rain barely let NYXL onto the point and made up for the lack of Zenyatta. On Hanamura, the rain choose to attack the first point with a solo tanking Wrecking Ball, Sombra, Hanzo, Zenyatta, and a Farah and Mercy combo. This composition forces positioning the NYXL on GOATs can't realistically kill most members of the rain with their lack of long range damage. Instead, they have to wait and protect the point. This gives the rain time to build up ultimates and pressure different angles on the point until someone gets low enough for a kill. Again, it's all about the rain putting fire under the NYXL until they make a mistake. The NYXL can't do a whole lot against a Hondo on one side and a damage boosted Farah on the other. Oh yeah, he's gonna swap off. As you say, spotted him out. That's gonna be the barrage coming through. Jonak and Livero both disappear. Anabo, the direct hit comes in. Erster they crumble within seconds and the rain move on to point B. Hanamura point B is notoriously difficult to capture. It's a small choke point. And with its defender spawn advantage, it makes it tough to break through and actually get capture percentage on the point. Because the rain failed to fully snowball the point at the beginning, they started to suffer under the power of goats. Without a way to circle around the NYXL or catch them out of position, the rain strategy simply didn't work. They only managed to capture the point with a lucky diva self-destruct that gets three kills. It's a map completed, but it's during overtime which gave NYXL the path to their eventual victory. Admittedly, the NYXL's attack on point A is a GOAT-style mess of visual effects and abilities. It's your typical GOAT's attack. The attacking team rolls over the enemy one with their nearby spawn advantage and capture the point. A lot of it is their ability to let Jonak shoot freely from behind and get the Rhine low. You'll notice that the fights they win usually involve Jonak getting tons of protection and time to deal damage. It's a brute force strategy that has worked for them against most teams and in this situation, it worked against the rain. Because given no positional advantages, the rain still can't quite compete with NYXL's ability to open the floor up for Jonak to pierce through their ranks. If you recall from Oasis, a lot of the opportunities that the rain found were based on their ability to come at the NYXL from many angles. On an assault map like Hanamura, that's nearly impossible. This ultimately lost the rain the map and the two teams move on to Blizzard World. Blizzard World is a funny map for the NYXL. Their initial attack on the point shows the team working to play aggressively onto the rain. They almost start to enact the same strategy of finding or making mistakes. Mono moves into the rain's Reinhardt, Pokpo, but then backs off. If you put the rain in the same position, they would have rushed forward and eliminated the team if they could have. Instead, the NYXL cautiously wait and start to build up percentage on the point. The NYXL win the point by forcing the rain into their team. Atlanta have to get back on the point to contest it. Even if the plan worked for the NYXL, they can't rely on controlling every fight like that. It's another sign of the NYXL playing passively until the enemy team is essentially forced to make risky plays. It's not only a potential waste of time, but it's been proven to not work against the rain before. You can see the inverse of this in the very next fight. As the payload moves towards the first choke point, the rain move forward the armor from their Brigida's rally. They slam into the NYXL and catch Onimo once again. And just like that, the rain clean up the NYXL and stop the payload. As in Oasis, the rain only lose their defense when they try to make a play with ultimates and it doesn't work out. It's like clockwork. The NYXL survives the missed ultimate and fires back with their own. It's a notable mistake by the rain, but their advantage over the NYXL remains. They know that if they pressure them, they'll win regardless of how many ultimates they have. In the next fight, the rain take the high ground and use the time to build up their ultimates. Surprisingly, Jonak gets a kill on Dogman, and both teams send out their Graviton Surges. The rain's confidence in winning the fight are clear in this moment. Dako, the rain's diva, 
doesn't use his self-destruct until the rest of his team pressure the NYXL backward. No, he's not in position to turn his shield around. The bomb gets three, and the rain hold once again. The rain managed to continue this aggressive style and complete the round without ever letting the NYXL reach the first checkpoint. For attack, the rain run the same composition they did on Hanamura, and it goes the same way for the NYXL. They wait too long and let the rain smother them in rockets and arrows. They keep the composition past the point and use the Sombra EMP to make the NYXL defenseless and open to a Fera rocket barrage. Instantly melted. Barrage. Four more members packed out. Barrage comes in. Mecco gonna be popped out here at the end. The rain play into the NYXL fast and don't let them find time to properly group up and make a concentrated effort. And with only having to reach near the first checkpoint to win the game, the rain never let up. After all, what can the NYXL do within the first two or so fights before the rain reach the outline point on the map? This win highlights the NYXL's lack of flexibility. They play goats, and that's it. The willingness to swap to counter the rain isn't there. Junker Town is a puzzling map for the rain. It's a map where they frequently made mistakes, particularly with Graviton Surges that cost them the map. It's where you can clearly see that the NYXL are experts on dismantling teams that screw up big time. It's almost inexplicable why the rain threw away so many Graviton Surges and Transcendences, especially given how they played in the game before. The best example of this is in the Reigns attacking fight near the first checkpoint. The team only had 30 seconds left to get it. The Reigns Zarya, Baby Bay, nearly had his ultimate which could turn the fight in their favor. As with any GOATS fight, it goes on for a long time. For some reason though, Baby Bay launches the Graviton Surge when the team had already lost its Lucio and the rest of his team were considerably far away. It disrupts their alt economy, leaving the NYXL up with their own grav. Luckily for Baby Bay and the rain, Dogman secures enough kills to get them the point, but this sort of mistake mirrors that of the NYXL. The rain only won the point through the brute force method of their Zenyatta hitting some clutch shots. Without Dogman's lethal aim and positioning, it would have been over. And that's not the kind of odds you want to play with when you're up against one of the best teams in the league like the NYXL. Though the rain push forward and play aggressively into New York, they start to fall apart when they get to the last point. Keep in mind, the NYXL respawn very closely, so it's on the rain to take care of the entire team in quick fashion. Unfortunately, it just doesn't happen. The NYXL grabs some early picks despite the rain's ultimate usage, and they hold the last point. The rain made the same crucial mistake again and again, Baby B wastes a Graviton Surge when key members of his team were already dead. It leaves the team with nothing to come back and fight the NYXL with, and it gives the NYXL more of an advantage. At that point, it almost looked like miscommunication, because part of the secret to playing aggressively like the rain is clean, sharp communication. The missed grabs demonstrate a partial flaw to playing this way. Too many missed opportunities will leave you suffering from the natural advantages of NYXL's GOATs. And thus, the NYXL won the game, and the match went to one last map. If you saw what happened to the NYXL and Oasis, you'd probably be nervous about Li Zhang Tower. It too is a control point map, and offers many opportunities for the rain to find a positional advantage over the NYXL. Again and again, the rain find ways to split up New York. At the beginning of the map, they catch their Brigida on the outside of the point. Later, Popo Primal rages into the NYXL and knocks Mono off the point. Despite all the ultimates used by both teams in between, the rain kept managing to eke out a pick. The aggressive play and the ability to target and eliminate a solo member of New York once again let rain take the round. Going the way for the Atlanta rain. It's unbelievable that they could do this potentially twice. The only team to do it twice this season. The Excelsior's prowess on the second map looked promising. They began the first fight with a fast pick on the Reign's Lucio. On Li Zhang Night Market, if you have the point, you can push up near your enemy's spawn and hold them there like a choke point. Naturally, the NYXL did this until they reached 99% on point. The only way Atlanta fought back was a Diva Bomb kill on Onimo and a cleanup. But like how the NYXL held them off the point, the Reign were able to do the same giving them precious time up to their point percentage. 
the NYXL only had to win a fight, but both teams were pretty equal in terms of available ultimates. As we've learned throughout this entire series of game, the NYXL doesn't do well without clear advantages. So unsurprisingly, the rain take the long right with them and find a way to grab enough picks to keep them off point. Even in the NYXL's last attack, they lost Jonak immediately because Ryan's D.Va flew into him when he was vulnerable. Without a full team to touch the point, Atlanta took the round, the map, and the whole series. The up, they take it 2-0! They shut down NYXL again! Unbelievable! Two for two! Two in a row here! against what was previously an undefeated... So how does one of the most successful teams in the Overwatch League lose to one of the league's newcomers? They lose due to their inability to adapt to a team that pinpointed a flaw in their strategy. The NYXL play to bait enemy teams, the rain charge into their prey. They find opportunities where they can turn someone's positioning into a mistake and take that pick to sweep through the team. It's an aggressive playstyle that has its risks. If you waste enough ultimates, you're going to lose. But if you capitalize on enough mistakes and pressure a great team like the NYXL, you can find their weakness every time. Oh wait, we win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, we win right yeah, now. Yeah. We yeah. win. Oh my god. We <laughs> won. Okay, we win. Yeah, we we win. Win. It's not I know, I know, I know, I know. But That's all from us. But what's your take on this match? It certainly was an upset, especially for Atlanta Rain to beat NYXL twice. Let us know your thoughts on this game in the comment section below.